that the Lord has given us. This is the day that the Lord has made that we may rejoice in it. We thank God because of this beautiful Sunday that we are going on air. We are already on air for our first service and our second service that comes shortly uh, at 11 a.m. You are welcome to be on board. God bless you. Let us give thanks unto the Lord for what he has done. And we are going to read the book of Acts 20, uh, 17. Acts 17, verses 24, 25. The Bible says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he giveth to all life, he giveth life to all, and breath, breath and all things, since he giveth to all life, and breath and all things. Verses 27, that they should seek the Lord, if happy they might feel after him, and fight him, though he be not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of our own poets have said, for we are of, of we are also his offsprings. We are going to thank the Lord this morning because he is the creator of heaven and earth. He has done great things upon our lives. The Bible says that he giveth life to all and breath to all things. We are opening our mouth this morning and telling God, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for breathing unto us this morning. Open your mouth and tell God, thank you. He is the giver of all things, the creator of heaven and earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you. Thank you, mighty redeemer, this morning. We exalt and we honor your holy name, the giver of all life. We worship you this morning. We worship you, King of glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not far from us, oh mighty Father. We come to exalt your holy name. We come to give you all the glory. We come to exalt you, King of kings. Jehovah, you are not far from us. We exalt your holy name. We exalt you, King of glory. In you we live. In you we move. In you we are like our being. Jehovah, we worship you. We are your offspring. Jehovah, we come to say thank you. We come to worship your holy name. Thank you for the gift of life this morning. We are your offspring, oh Father. We are your offspring, our Father. We exalt and we honor your holy name. Thank you, mighty Redeemer. In you we live. In you we move. We are your being so Lord. We exalt and we honor you. Thank you, mighty Redeemer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. We exalt your holy name. We exalt you, King of Kings. You give it life to all beings. We exalt you for the gift of life this morning. We adore your holy name. Thank you, mighty Redeemer. Thank you, King of Kings. Be exalted in Jesus' mighty name. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. We Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We worship your name. Zika Parabosi Tiribos. Zika Tiribos. Shandiribos. Zika Taya. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We worship your name. You have done mighty and great things. We lift your name on high. You are awesome, God. Ziko torobo zika taraba bo zika taya zato robo shetiri bo bo ziki tiri bo bo zando robo bo ziki tiri bo bo zika taya. We give you the praise. We give you the praise, Lord. Zika parandiri bo. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Isaiah 54. Zika taraba bo bo. Rika taraba bo bo. Verse 17. The Bible says. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall uh, thou shalt condemn. The Lord and their uh, shall condemn. This is the inheritance, the, inherit, the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. I want us to make this prayer uh, for the nation of Kenya. 
as we declare in the name of Jesus, no power, no weapon against this nation. So we are praying that whatever the devil is forming against this nation shall not succeed. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Declare no weapon of the enemy, no power of darkness against the nation of Kenya shall prosper in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, so the man of uh, the Son of Man is lifted. That whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternity. We declare diseases and sickness, coronavirus, that weapon that the enemy has formed against the nation of Kenya and in the whole world shall not prosper, shall not succeed. Declare in the name of Jesus. Raposi kaparandiki desire. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence and we destroy every weapon of the enemy against the nation of Kenya. We declare diseases are not our portion in this nation of Kenya. Coronavirus has no portion in this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus, declare the blood of Jesus upon this nation. We declare the blood of Jesus. The Bible says uh, that the Lord sent his war and healed all our diseases. Uh, he redeemed us from any destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we thank you. We declare we are delivered. Uh, we destroy every force, every power in the name of Jesus. Uh, Kenya is preserved. Uh, the nation of Kenya is safe uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we lift your name. We glorify your name. We declare the blood of Jesus upon the nation of Kenya. We speak healing to the infected, to the affected in the name of Jesus. We pray for the healing of them that are sick in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we declare deliverance, we declare preservation, we declare protection upon the nation of Kenya in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. All power belongs to you alone. All power belongs to you alone. All power belongs to you. Alone, our Father, all power belongs to you. Alone, all power, all power belongs to you. Alone, all power belongs to you. All power, authority, dominion.
the Lord we lift up our voices Hallelujah. to worship him to magnify his goodness Hallelujah. he is worthy of our praise he is worthy of our duration he's a king of kings the Lord of Lords the ancient of days our God our Savior our deliverer our father our friend father we thank you we glorify your name you've been so good to us oh dear Lord we thank you for who you are in our lives we thank you for all that you are in our lives. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the reason. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. There is none but you. Be exalted forever. Thank you for this great, wonderful, bright day that you have given us. We thank you for taking us through all the way this 2020. Until now, Lord, we say we are because you have made us to be when you will live we move and have our being there is no way for us to be without your breath lord you have sustained us we thank you for the victories we thank you for the battles that you have fought for us we thank you for the breakthroughs that you've given us we worship you and magnify your holy name in jesus greatest mighty name amen and amen atawale tuko pale nyumbani Shout a living amen to the King of kings and the Lord of lords for his goodness. He is worthy to be praised and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the King. Glory to the ancient of days of our God. We bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh yes, it is a beautiful day, wonderful morning that the Lord has given us. This wonderful Sunday morning, this is our first service. And shortly we will be having the second service. Thank you, praise team, for the great, uh, wonderful work. We appreciate you. Thank you for taking us through. And we thank God for that. For all of you that are right now tuned in on JGV FM, and those that are already live on Facebook, want you to... Know that I highly appreciate you and welcome to church online. Karibu sana katika ibada ya siku ya jumapili. And we thank God that the Lord has kept us. If you can hear my voice and you can see my face, I want you to know that uh, you are a living testimony. You are a wonder because the Lord has worked wonders. The Lord has done great and wonderful things. Therefore, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We continue giving thanks to God for our country. We believe that God has given us victory. And we believe that um, we have victory over all the schemes of the devil. Because the Lord has frustrated all the devices of the crafty. That their hands cannot perform. I believe that soon by the hand of God we shall be able to return back to assembling as the church of God. And be able to worship together which day I'm looking forward unto, and I want you to join me in that faith, believing God that very soon it shall be so. I believe that God has kept you, the Lord has given you our testimonies, the Lord has preserved you and your family, and there is a reason at this particular time, and in the times to come, that you must never be deterred, you are focusing God, you must never look on the side shows of the enemy, the floods, the the storms of life and the challenges that are coming by, they cannot stop God's purposes for your life and they cannot thwart what God has intended to do for your life. It will surely come to pass just like we have sung that if the Lord has spoken, it will surely come to pass. There is nothing to stop that. Welcome, this is Great Gospel Visioners. Bishop Patrick Karyuk here. I'm glad to have you on board. Please, for those that are with me, on live Facebook, 
I highly appreciate you. I know that we are many. I can say we are many. I may not be able to mention your name, your names right now, but I want you to know I highly appreciate. One more thing I will request from you is that you may share and uh, host a party, watch party as we continue. Meanwhile, gather your people also in your house, those that are in their houses, your children. If you can be able to connect to the big screen, maybe the television set, go ahead and do it and let us be blessed together. Oh yes, oh yes. I feel that we are entering a very important season as we come to the end of May. Let me tell you, the month of June is going to be a special one. It's going to be a month of uh, turn around. Hallelujah. Uh, turn around. I've already declared by faith that the month of June is going to be our month of turn around. And you, you shall not die. You shall live to see the month of turn around. You will live the month, the whole of this year. You will see the goodness of the Lord. Corona has no power to take away your life. Amen. So we've been looking on a very important subject. Uh, for those that uh, maybe you are joining us for the first time or maybe you are connecting to this our program for the very first time either by radio, GGVFM and uh, uh, Facebook I want you to know that we have been taking a great journey on study, we've been doing a study on grace of God that is the grace of God and it has been powerful I will also refer you to the previous uh, programs that we've heard and you will be able to connect very powerfully. We've been talking about grace and we said that grace is a person. Because grace is Jesus himself. So grace is a personality, Jesus himself. We talked about things like a grace is the hand of God of giving. Very, very important. The hand of God of giving, showing kindness to mankind. Which must be received by faith by man very powerful we also mentioned things like um, grace has many dimensions and it will be very important please that 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 you understand that grace has many dimensions so you cannot get stuck on one dimension of grace for example there is a grace dimension that brings salvation i call it the saving grace as we see it in the scriptures ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 that by grace are ye saved mm. by through faith by by grace are ye saved through faith and he says it is not of your own it's not of your own works it is a gift of god so the saving grace dimension is very powerful because it is the one that introduces us into the kingdom and as we continue please i would still request that you can check if the sound is reaching you well. Uh, let us know both on the GGV and also on Facebook. Those feedbacks are very helpful uh, so that we can keep on serving you better. So that grace dimension of salvation is, is the one that introduces a sinner into the kingdom of God. It is very, very important that every one of us, all those that are not born again right now, let me tell you, the hand of God is outstretched towards you. The hand of grace to save you, to bring you into the kingdom. It is not of works. It is not your efforts. All you need to do is to believe in Jesus Christ and his perfect work, finished, complete work on the cross. Then you shall be saved. After you are saved, the grace has many other dimensions. Baada umeokoka, hiyo neema iko na pande zingine ama zingine ambazo unastahili kufanyia ku, ku, kuendelea na kudhihirisha na kuweza kufurahia katika maisha mwako. We talked about the grace that sanctifies. It is a grace that teaches us to say no to ungodliness. So the grace that saves after you are saved, it teaches you to say no and godliness the same grace has another dimension the grace that enables you to work and have results the same grace that saved you has another dimension the grace that makes you to prosper 
The same grace has another dimension that makes you to, to serve the Lord acceptably. So all these are various dimensions of grace. So you cannot single the grace of God on one dimension and, and get stuck there. Now, allow me now to go to the topic of today. And today, we are looking on what I'm calling when grace is taken in vain. When grace is taken in vain. Ama wakati neema inachukuliwa kwa buri. When grace is taken in vain. Paul the apostle in the book of 2 Corinthians told us that uh, it is possible for the grace to be taken in vain. When grace is taken in vain, things are serious. Now go down, Second Corinthians chapter 6. Look at verse 1. Now you know from chapter 5, that's where he's talking about um, the, those that receive Jesus Christ, they have become new creation. They are born in the kingdom. They have been turned. There is no more of the past in their life. The new has come. And that they have been turned into, they have been made into righteousness of God. They have been made the ambassadors of God. Then coming from there, chapter 6, verse 1, he says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. That ye receive not the grace of God in vain. He is beseeching them, the church of Corinth, that they must not take the grace of God in vain. So grace of God, as powerful as it is, as important as it is, as so critical as it is, can be taken in vain. When the grace is taken in vain, there is no gain by that grace that is taken in vain when the grace is taken in vain it there is no gain because it is grace that makes one to gain for example paul said i am what i am by the grace i am by the grace of god he said that the grace of god that was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I went to labor and he said, I have labored more than they all. Again, they are comparing himself with, 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 with the other apostles. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. That by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. So Paul did not take the grace in vain. And see what happened. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was bestowed upon me. Oh, Rabakan Sopranigos. Look at that. He says, do not take the grace of God in vain. Then he said, for me, I did not take it in vain. But look. I have laid back more. Look at my results. And when you look at the results of Paul the apostle, he even says, I have laid back more than all. That is, he has, he has, over, he has overtaken some of the, some of the uh, apostles, uh, Peter and John and the rest. 75% of the New Testament writing and instructions and teachings about Jesus and his kingdom we get it from Paul. He has planted so many churches. He has done an incredible missionary work. Oh yes. That the grace that was bestowed upon me was not in vain. If it is not in vain, then it is in gain. But it is always serious when grace is taken in vain. When grace is taken in vain, it is always very serious. Now write this if you're writing there. What, what does it mean to take the grace in vain? 
So question. So what does it mean to take the grace in vain? Number one. To take the grace of God in vain, it means to take the grace of God without purpose. Without purpose. When the grace is taken without purpose, then the grace of God has been taken in vain. Number two. What does it mean to take the grace in vain? Where your grace is not engaged for results, then grace has been taken in vain. Where your grace is not engaged for results, then that grace has been taken in vain. Because essentially grace is organized and made by God for results. To give you results that are greater than your qualification. To give you results that are bigger than your efforts. To give you results that are greater than your strength. To give you results that are greater than your human networks. To give you results that are bigger than any human ability can produce. So when grace is not engaged for results, then that grace has been taken for granted or in vain. Has been taken in vain. Let me show you here. In the book of Isaiah, the word of God paints a picture. It says there, Isaiah chapter 5. Look at Isaiah chapter 5. We see a picture where grace was taken in vain. He says, now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard my well beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill i mean isaiah chapter one chapter five verse one he says verse two and he first takes and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. So it did not produce as intended. Then verse 3, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt that is between me, and my vineyard. Verse 4. And what, what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. It did not produce as intended. There were no results. Even after much work, you can see verse 1. He says that it is, a, it is on a wonderful, fruitful hill. It is a choice vine. He has removed the stones. He has put a fence round about it. He has built a water tower. He has done everything. He has even put a wine press in readiness for the harvest. He has literally done everything there was to do in order to get the wine from this to get the results. But lo and behold, it did not bring. And if it brought anything at all, it was a strange product. We have done everything. So grace has been taken in vain. And he says, What else? What else could, could have been done into this, my beloved land? What else was not yet done? What else needed to be done? What else was still lacking? You know, when we talk about grace, I feel the anointing. When we talk about the grace, grace is everything. Because grace is God himself. And all that he has. I think we made a statement in the course of this teaching. 
that, that, that grace avails to us all that God is and all that he has. So after grace, God has nothing else to give or to do. Because grace is a person. Grace is Jesus. After God has given grace, if after this, we still don't have fruits to show, we still don't have a harvest to show, then God is wondering what else. Just like in this garden. When grace is taken in vain, there is no way out again. Because grace is everything of God. Grace is all that God is. Grace is everything that God has. Grace is everything that God is. Grace is everything that God has. Once he has given us the grace, he has nothing else to do. Just like that choice garden. So, but when it is taken for granted and in vain, it is very serious because no way out. For example, now God has given out the grace of salvation. Any man that will take it for granted, God has nothing else to do. God will not bring Jesus again. God has, he will not bring another Jesus to die on the cross. Oshakata bakata lakosia. That's very important to know. So now let's see. When is grace taken in vain? When is grace taken in vain? Please, I will encourage you to take notes. You know, when you take notes, you are able to go back and do a study by yourself and be able to turn them, their preaching points and teaching points into prayer points. In fact, that is how it is supposed to be. Every time you hear a word, a teaching, the points on teaching after the preaching, you should now turn them into prayer points. Oh Lord, according to this point, like this, and the scriptures are touched, then you begin to pray. So, when is grace taken in vain? When is grace taken in vain? Number one, grace is taken in vain when the gospel is not received. When the gospel is not received, then grace has been taken in vain. Because there where we read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, look at verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, look at verse 2. Now verse 1 of course is where we are saying, We then as co-workers together with him beseech you also, that he received not the grace of God in vain. Verse 2. For he, for he saith, I have heard thee in a time acceptable. And in the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So that is gospel. Because he has said this is the acceptable time. So when the gospel is not received in this case the gospel of salvation, then the grace has been taken in vain. Has been taken in vain. Look at Acts chapter, the Acts of the Apostles, 20. Please help us to know whether you are getting us clear. Keep on commenting and sharing, and especially about the sound, whether the sound is okay. Where you are, whether the, you can see my face. Now, Acts 20, verse 24. Hallelujah. But none of this, Paul is saying there, but none of these things move me, neither count I my, my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. To testify the gospel of the grace of God. To testify the gospel of the grace of God. Because the gospel is the gospel of grace. So when somebody rejects the gospel. Or does not receive the gospel. What he has done is that he has, he has taken the grace. That is found in the gospel in vain. So in 
Anytime you hear the gospel and you do not receive it, you have taken grace in vain because this is how God brings grace to us by the gospel. So gospel is a carrier of grace. For example, the amazing grace that saved a wretch like me or you. How did it, how did it come to us? How did we receive that grace? It was not until we had the gospel preached and we accepted that gospel. By receiving that gospel, that is how we received the amazing grace that saves wretches like us. So when gospel is preached to you, when you encounter the gospel, what actually you are encountering is grace. It's a package of God's grace. In that gospel is the grace of God, the multifaceted, the manifold grace, the grace in many dimensions. So failure to receive that gospel is failure to receive the grace of God. Or when you take it for granted, it's taking that grace in vain. Every time you have an opportunity to receive the gospel, know that it is not just preaching you are receiving. In that preaching, in that teaching, in that word of God coming, there is grace inside of it. It is called the word of grace that is able to give you inheritance among them that are sanctified. It is the grace of God inside that gospel. How many people have taken for granted? We've been preaching over the years. We've been preaching through all the means in churches, in crusades, in conferences, in radio, through the televisions, through books and all that. But how many people until now, they have not received the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is taking the grace in vain. And I've just said, once you take grace in vain, God has nothing else to do. Because grace is all that God gave us. And it has all of God. And it has all the things of God. Number two. When grace. When is grace taken in vain? Number two. Grace is taken in vain. When a man of God. Listen carefully. When a man of God is not received. Or is taken for granted. That is very important. Grace is taken in vain when a man of God is not received or is taken for granted. That is very important. Don't worry. We are in the world. I know that you are hearing some other sounds. But the, the sound of the Almighty is greater than any other. Hallelujah. When a man of God is taken for granted or is not received... What people have just done is that they have taken in vain the grace of God. Now, I'll show you something. I'll show you something. Then we conclude. Now, the man of God is a carrier of grace. I know some of you, you may have troubles with that. But this is the truth. The man of God is a carrier of God's grace. So, when the man of God is not received... What you have just done is that you have failed to receive the grace of God. When the man of God is taken for granted, what you just did is that you took the grace of God for granted. Let me show you maybe with some few scriptures here. Go to Philippians chapter chapter 1. Ramagada balabagada balabush. Philippians chapter 1, look at verse 7. Aha. Uh -huh. Now let's start from verse 6 because we are familiar with verse 6. Paul says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Look at that. I know we know that verse. That the good work that the Lord has started in your life he shall perfect it. That one we quote many times. Whatever good work the Lord has started in your life, it shall be perfected. How shall it be perfected? Look at verse 7. As it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, 
in so much as both in my bonds and in defense and confirmation of the gospel ye all are partakers of my grace to the church of Philippi that which God has started in your life it shall be perfected how shall it be perfected then he begins to say oh church of Philippi all of you I have all of you in my heart that is to say I love you guys and because of this all of you you are partakers of my grace partakers in this case he did not say you are partakers of the grace of Jesus of course this is the grace of Jesus but he says now you are partakers of my grace I Paul as a man of God as an apostle to you as the voice of God an oracle of God in your life now you are partakers of my grace so think about it if they are partakers of his grace and they take him for granted what have they done they have just taken the grace of God for granted now if Paul says you are partakers of my grace and they reject Paul what have they done they just rejected the grace of God now this is very important true men of God that are called by God they are not summoners they are not entertainers they are not um, soothsayers <laughs> They are not motivational speakers. A true record man of God that is sent into your life, he is carrying God's grace. When you receive him, you have received God's grace. Now, did you know in Matthew, he said that 1044 there, he said, that when you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive prophet reward. What is a prophet's reward? What is the reward of a man of God? It is not money. It is not material things. The greatest thing that you can receive from a man of God is not any amount of money physically. It is not any, any material thing. The greatest thing that you can receive from a man of God, the reward is actually the grace they carry. That's why sometimes when we are receiving a man of God, we say we want to receive the grace of God. The man of God is a package of God's grace. That's very important. Anywhere Paul was not received, they did not receive that grace. In the way he was received, there was that grace coming upon them. Hallelujah. That's very important. You receive the grace of God by receiving the man of God. I know in this country, we are in a season where men of God are despised. Just the other day, you see, the stigma that is going along with Corona... When any other person is attacked by the disease, they will hide their name. But just in case a servant of God is attacked, they will mock him or her, mentioning her name and attach prayers to it. Positive after prayers. And they bring the picture and they talk about the person. Yet the politicians who tested positive, their names are carefully hidden. But because we are in a generation that detests the men of God and servants of God, we do not see them. Look at this. Men of God and servants of God, they are not just people who are preaching. You see, to an extent that the men of God ministries and preachings are not considered as essential services. So what we have said is that the grace of God is not essential. <laughs> it is by power and by works. We have doctors who can do 
Yes, we have bought equipment and uh, medical expertise from abroad. We don't need churches. We don't need any man of God to preach anywhere. They are not essential. Okay. I hope you are getting what I'm talking about. Paul said, you are partakers of my grace. So you receive Paul, you partake the grace. You reject Paul, you have rejected the grace. That's a fact. Now Jesus was both a prophet and a savior. He was a prophet to the Jews of the time. And he was a savior to the entire world. When he walked on the face of the earth with his physical body, he was a prophet to them. A man of God to them. How they received him determined how much they were going to get from him. Jesus, Bible says, I think we can look there quickly. John, go quickly to the book of John. Look at John. Look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1 verse 16. I just say that uh, to the Jews of that time, Jesus was a prophet. Just like the men of God of our time, they are prophets sent to us. And we have said that the grace of God comes in the package of a man of God. Hallelujah. John, look at John. John chapter 1, look at verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. He says, and of his fullness, verse 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Some versions will say grace upon grace. 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So Jesus was not just a preacher. He came with the grace. He came with the grace. And as a prophet to the Jews of the time, they did not receive them. Some of them, they did not receive them. Did not receive him. Because we are told again in the same chapter, verse 12, verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The one who has come with the grace. He came to his own. His own did not receive him. So what did they do? When they did not receive him, they actually did not receive the grace that he carried. Look at verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Koraba shakata. I know somebody, I'm answering somebody right now here. And I know you'll be blessed. Because my desire is to have you receive the grace of God. Not in vain, but in gain. So Jesus, who came with grace, they did not receive him. His own people, they did not receive him. So when they rejected him, they rejected that grace. But any other person that believed in Jesus... Those that received him, he gave them power to become. That empowerment comes by that grace. It is a type of grace. Do you know, men of God, I want to encourage men of God a little here. You cannot empower anybody who has not believed in you. you can, that grace that you carry cannot empower people that despise you. You can be there very powerful and, and graced. But not until, as a man of God, you are received, you cannot empower a community. Because there is a man of God that will send in your life. There is a man of God that is sent in a city. There is a man of God that is sent in a community. There is a man of God that is sent to an entire generation. So when he is rejected, they have obviously rejected the grace. Just like in the times of Jesus. Do you know? Bible says vividly. There are places that Jesus could not do miracles. Mighty miracles and mighty works. Everywhere else. That grace was available for the people. He will heal the sick. The blind will see. Demons will come out. Bread will be multiplied. But to them that they did not receive him. 
that grace that he carried was not available for them. We are told in Mark chapter 6, again he came to his own country and his people, they despised him. They said, is this not the carpenter's sons? Carpenter's sons. And not his brothers with us and his sisters. We know him. This young boy, a young man, he's only 30. What can he tell us? And they were offended at him. Bible says, Mark chapter 6 verse 5, and he could there do no mighty works. Can you look at that? So grace was in vain because Jesus is grace. He's the one that came with grace. So that grace, even though it was available, it was in vain to this his own people. How many times have we taken the grace that has come to us in the package of the man of God and we took that grace in vain? We took that grace in vain. We took that grace in vain. Men of God, men of God that are caught by God, let me tell you, it is not when they are ministering, when people forsake all other things, it is not because they are trying to get a profession and a livelihood on their pulpits. Many of them, they left what they would be doing just like any other ordinary person. And maybe even do better than others in the ordinary life, in the marketplace. But they had to leave that because of following the call of God. This grace drove them. We say that grace of God, when it comes upon your life, you, you, you will be able to do things you cannot do by yourself in any other way. So the man of God carrying the grace because God wants to help people. He wants to help people so that they can do what they cannot do by themselves. He sent to a city, to a people, to a person. How you treat that grace package in the man of God determines how much of God's grace you will see in your life. I'm not talking about being born again. You can be born again without the man of God, a particular man of God. But if this is a man of God that God has brought in your life, then this grace that is availed by God to you and you have rejected it, then, and I have just said, once God has given you grace, he has nothing else to give. The greatest gift that God gave to mankind is his servants. Men of God in our time, Men of God in our time are the greatest gifts that God has given to any society. You do not despise the man of God in your life. That's why he said, you shall believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. He said again, you see the same words, believe also his prophets. It's part of the Bible. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe also his prophets. You shall believe the Lord your God. You don't just say, oh, I believe in God. I don't need any man of God. How, how, how can I believe in, in a man? That, that's why. Because you cannot change God's formula. We cannot change God. If he has said this is how things will be done, that is exactly how they will be done. So there is no other way. So believe in the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe also his prophets. Believe also his prophets. Where Jesus was not believed, that grace was not available. The sick still died of their sickness. People that were suffering under witchcraft, they still continue to suffer under witchcraft. Where men of God are despised, people even die before their time. Hmm. Hmm. I thought a time like now in this country is a very high time to regard men of God from all levels from all levels but unfortunately this is the highest time we are showing disdain against men of God in the ancient times when, there's, when a country had a challenge they called for the man of God man of God give us a solution you carry something from God 
The water of Jericho was bitter and the soil carried dead. People drank water and were dying. The soil was carrying dead. It was calling for people to die before their time. Then they recognized the grace upon Elisha. And they says, look, the city looks very nice. But the soil is full of death. The water carried dead. Can you do something? Then the man of God, he brought, he asked for some things, salt, and healed the land. And from that day, the land was healed. Maybe the land is still sick because the grace that God has availed through his servants has been ignored, taken in vain, trampled under feet, despised, publicized on the negative, on the headline of the newspapers, criticized everywhere as gratonous pulpit people. And when that happens, you're still wondering why locusts, why floods, why corona, why cancer, why terrible things happening. Believe also his prophets and you shall prosper. There's a prosperity dimension that only comes because we are partakers of the grace that God has availed. How I pray in this country that in every county and in every city, Various men of God will be honored and be received not as people who are preaching for a livelihood, but as that precious grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know that the greatest problem that Moses had, let me say this week, wind up now. The greatest problem and the greatest fear that Moses had when he was called to go deliver the children of Israel in the land of Egypt was not the Egyptians was not even Pharaoh himself and Pharaoh was a dread Pharaoh was no joke Pharaoh demanded to be worshipped Pharaoh was no joke his word was final but when God was calling Moses at the burning bush Moses expressed his fears not fear against Pharaoh he was not fearing Pharaoh Neither was he fearing the Egyptians, but he feared the same people he was sent to deliver. He engaged God on a platform of, Lord, I think I'm not able, because those guys, that is the people I'm supposed to deliver, they may not believe in me. In fact, the miracle of, this, of the stake turning into a snake was a proof so that he may go and convince his brethren the miracle of the hand turn, turning into leprous. It was for the purpose to convince Moses that look, yes, I will do something so that you can go convince the Jews, the same people you are supposed to deliver. His, his engagement with God was not about the, 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 the Egyptians and Pharaoh. His concern was the same people he was supposed to deliver. I say again, the man of God is a package of grace. When you receive the man of God, you have received the grace of God. When you reject the man of God, you have rejected grace. There is a country in East Africa, a man of God, I think somewhere, 70s, went to preach there. They chased him away. The government of the day chased the man of God away. He was an American. Immediately after the man of God left the country, could not preach disasters, issues, civil wars, calamities. The country was continually unstable until they got some nice, some wise counsel. Let's call the man of God so that we can apologize. And from the highest seat, they made an apology after several years and they invited the man of God again. The country has been healing. They have even discovered oil. The country is doing well. You don't know what you may have missed by taking for granted the man of God. In your city, 
that man you call your pastor. He may not even have a big title like prophet, major prophet, the only prophet, chief prophet. He may be using a simple title like pastor. I am pastor so and so. Yet he's a man of God sent to you. He's a carrier of God's grace. So do not take the grace of God in vain. The grace of God is taken in vain when the man of God is not received or taken for granted. As I come to you right now, I have no doubt from this exalted altar, there is a notion of grace and virtue of grace that should be able to reach you right now. If you are not born again, that grace is available right now. Do not reject that, this gospel. Don't reject this gospel because it is God's visitation. Wherever you are, you need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You have the opportunity now, either by radio, on Facebook, wherever you are. Right now, no matter who is with you, just need to think about your relationship with Jesus Christ. You have an opportunity right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you now. I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that Jesus, that you are the Lord and the Savior of my life. I receive forgiveness. I receive salvation. I receive the grace that saves. I am now saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. I am forgiven. In Jesus name. Maybe you need to pray it in Swahili. Unaitaji kuomba katika kiswahili. Ukaiza kumpokea Yesu sasa hivi. Sema buwana Yesu. Na kuamini. Na amini ya kwamba ulikufa na ukafufuka. Na amini na kutangaza. Uwe ni buwana. Na mwakozi wa maisha yangu. Siku ya leo. Na pokea neema ya wakovu. Na nimekili kwa mdomo wangu. Ya kwamba nimeokoka. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Glory to God. I pray for everyone else, every one of you, wherever you are with your family. As I said, I believe there is a grace right now upon this altar that should reach you right at home, your family, and all that you're doing, and the works of your hands, the grace that will be able to preserve you. As you raise your faith and even your hands, I declare the grace of God upon your life right now. I pray the grace of the time upon this altar and upon my life be a partaker of this grace in Jesus' mighty name. Be a partaker of this grace, the grace that God has put upon my life and upon this altar. Receive it right now wherever you are in the mighty name of Jesus because I minister to you out of love. May you receive it in the name of Jesus. By this grace, I declare healing upon your body every sickness and disease out of your system right now. Receive God's healing power right now. I command sickness and disease out of your body, out of your head, out of your chest, out of your stomach, out of your bones, out of your blood, out of your skin, out of your eyes, out of your reproductive system, digestive system, all systems, nervous system, your brain. I command right now, by the grace that is here. Receive your healing right now. That difficult disease. Tumors disappear. Growth disappear. I command cancer. Leave your body right now. Whichever cancer. Cancer of colon. Cancer of blood. Leukemia. I command it out of your system. Bone disease. I command them out of you. Corona. I command right now. Whether you know it or not. I keshe kotataya. I declare receive your healing right now. A diabetes has no power. It has killed many people in your family. But not you. Not after this grace. Receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. I speak the grace of God upon the works of your hands. As you wake up tomorrow to go back to your work and your business. I declare the grace of success. The grace that worketh wonders. The grace that prospers in the marketplace. The grace that prospers in the corporate world. The grace that, that succeeds in the farming business. In the name of Jesus, whatever you're doing, may you receive the grace of God. You believe in this voice that is speaking to you. 
according to Second Chronicles 2020, receive prosperity. Receive prosperity. Whatever that God has put in your hand shall not fail. I declare more precaution in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we begin to enter the month of June, there shall be a turnaround in your life. There shall be a different story. They said you are going down. You shall begin to rise up. When they say, when, they, when there is a casting down, you shall say there is a lifting up. I declare it shall be well with you. I have spoken to you. You have seen my face. You have heard my voice. I declare receive that grace. In the name of Jesus, you shall not die before your time. Accidents cannot take away your life. Sickness will not take away your life. Bullets, targeted and stray bullets, they have no power. The sun shall not smite you by the day, nor the moon by night. The Lord deliver you from six and seven troubles. May you live to live all your life, to fulfill your assignment, to do all you are supposed to do, to have all that you are supposed to have, to glorify God in this life. Receive in the name of Jesus. I declare you are lifted above oppression of men and demons and witchcraft and sorcery and wicked powers in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall live this year. You shall not die. You shall live to declare the praises of God. Whatever that was failing will come back afloat. And Noah found grace and he did not drown. You have found grace you will not drown in the current floods of disease and other calamities. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I feel the anointing and power. Glory to God. Amen. I bless even your children, those that are candidates. Candidates of form four. Candidates of class eight. It shall be well with them. I declare that your children are preserved from the current anxiety in the name of Jesus. If we do exams this year, may your children do well. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now don't miss. Shortly after now, we shall have a break of 10 minutes that we shall come back to the second service. In the second service, you don't want to miss because I'll be talking about when grace is taken in vain, and I will show you from the scriptures, maybe things you have not seen before. It's going to be powerful. And I promise it is going to be short in the second service. Please join me shortly. Those that gave their life to Jesus and those that have maybe any other personal desire of ministry, then these are the numbers you can use. 706-127-910. Especially that those that have prayed the prayer of getting saved. Wale wa meokoka sahi tafadhari baada ya maombi. Mutaweza kukomunikati na sisi. Katika namba ya safaricom 0706-127-910. Airtel ni 0733-788-188. Airtel is 0733-788-188. Please communicate to us. Let us know that you made that prayer of getting saved. You have any other concern you want to communicate to us, you can do that. My email, patrickjgv at gmail.com. Patrickjgv at gmail.com. So we are closing this service, but shortly after uh, 10 minutes, we'll be back for the second service. It's going to be awesome. Really, really, I'm very excited about the second service because there is something important. I'll take you through Oshakata. You don't want to miss that one. Please, let's, let's, let's have a break. God bless you. It is well with your life. You are kept and protected of God. Thank you so much. Keep on commenting. Keep on sharing. Even after this service, uh, keep on inviting people. Share with others. Send the, the program to others. Thank you so much. Coming to you shortly. I love you. Guys, God be with you. It is well with your life.